Oh, you guys, you guys, sometimes you make me do things that I didn't ever plan on doing. Namely, in this case, explaining how I removed the Battle Damage Paint apps from the new Transformers Siege figures. Well, I did it already with the Leader Class Ultra Magnus, and I can't really show that because he wasn't mine, but I did have another couple that I was planning on doing the same sort of thing with. Namely, the two faction leaders, Megatron and Optimus. And I'm going to take you guys step by step through what I did to customize these two in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gothbot, and it is fantastic that you're here again. Happy Valentine's if you celebrate that. Happy being single day if you celebrate that. Happy being alive, man. Just happy being alive and having Transformers in your life. Check me out everywhere. Have a look at Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, NL, and me everywhere. And please, like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. You know it is extremely appreciated, and like I said, I'm doing something here that I didn't really plan on doing. You see, when I looked at Ultra Magnus, I didn't really explain how I removed the paint apps. <laughs> Man, you guys spoke in droves saying, hey, what did you do? Well, rather than explain it over and over and over, I said, hey, maybe I'll show it with Optimus and Megatron, and then... I shared a couple of select pictures of what I did with Optimus and Megatron, these two guys, and people started really asking a lot of questions. So I said, whoa, 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 man. Whoa. Chill out. How about I go and explain step by step what I did to each of these guys to make them just that much more G1 accurate. Of course, the most important thing here is how I removed the Battle Damage Paint apps that I'm really not a fan of. If you are, then hey, I guess this isn't for you. But if you don't like them either, well, this might be an option for you. But it's not the only thing that I did with these guys. I'll cover them one at a time, but without any further ado, let's head over to the table and take a closer look at both of them. And so sometimes life is funny. I had absolutely no intention of doing this. When I looked at Ultra Magnus, Back in episode 497, toward the end of that review, I showed a picture of him with the battle damage paint apps removed. I didn't really explain how it was done. I just said, hey, if you want to know what he looks like with them removed, this is what it looks like. And I kind of ended up getting a little bit of a hailstorm afterwards of people saying, hey, you didn't explain how you removed them. And I've also heard of a lot of scenarios where people have like warped plastic or ruined figures. I'm not really sure how that happens. And so I kind of put it out to the community and asked, hey, would you guys actually like to know exactly what it was I did? And I had uh, people even here say that they would have liked to have seen me explain what I did. Uh, TF.Customs, for example. Aries0083. Patriot Prime Reviews. Marco Career, I think. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sebastian Nock, or Nook. And John Evans, among others, all mentioned that, yeah, it would probably be a nice idea to know exactly what I did. So, I said... Hey, I still have to do Siege Megatron and Optimus Prime. I'll explain it step by step then. So, we are actually kind of doing an update on these two guys right now. We're going to do them one at a time. I'm literally going to take you step by step through what I did to complete custom for both in case you want to try doing it or part of it yourself. We, of course, need to begin with getting all of our materials together that we're going to need to use in order to accomplish this. Then we'll look at each of these one at a time, Megatron first, followed by Optimus after. So, so here we have everything that I used to do this custom. And it seems like a lot because it is a lot. Very first thing to note is this. It is rubbing alcohol. Now, 
there's been some debate as to what you should use. This is 91%. I did use 70% at first. I certainly use 70% on Ultra Magnus, and I would advise perhaps trying to use that first. I'll explain why a little bit later. There's also the option of using 99%. Don't. That could warp and ruin the plastic. 91% is what you want to use, but you need to use it the correct way, properly. So, rubbing alcohol, very first thing. Then, here we have uh, cleaning wipes or baby wipes, something along those lines, as well as a dishcloth, because you're going to want to use running water and probably dish liquid or some other sort of soap. I use dish liquid, but you can kind of use what you want. Uh, we have cotton swabs way down on the end, as well as paper towels. We have two gloss paints here. One is a bright red, the other is a black. Uh, then we also have this piece here. I think this is called a mandrel, and we have a disc on it. This disc is used for cutting. Some would use it on a drill, some would use it on a rotary tool, like a Dremel type of thing. And if you don't have that, then you can certainly try using, though I don't have it here, hold on. You can certainly try using something like uh, a pen knife or a uh, crafting knife, so to speak. And it is beneficial if you have a pair of crafting scissors, little, fine, specific, detailed scissors. Larger scissors will be more difficult, but that is everything. Oh, and you'll notice uh, just a piece of kind of folded paper there. This is everything that I use from beginning to end to do absolutely everything. In the midst of all that, I forgot to mention that obviously you're going to need a paintbrush, a little bit of sandpaper never hurts, a pair of tweezers will probably help the situation, and finally, a handy dandy toothpick. And so I said we were going to begin with Megatron, and step number one is to remove his fusion cannon and the piece on his back because there's something that I did with it. I've already shown it, but I'm going to show it again. And so here we have his like blaster that turns into a sword. It's the turret of his tank. Now, I don't like these pieces. I don't like him having a sword personally. You can remove them in here. These pieces have a mushroom peg that's into a little hole that kind of slots out from right there. I did not realize you could do this. Double shout out here to Patriot Prime because I saw him do it first. So you can take those out and then you have these pieces left. And if you are so inclined, I mean you can like kind of put them up like that I guess. Just sort of edit the way. And now this piece is ready to go back onto his back. And of course we have it put in there now and it mimics uh, kind of his uh, like uh, barrel that comes up over his shoulder in G1. Now some people will note that there have been pictures floating around on some of the boards and in some of the forums and whatnot where it looks like this piece is down lower. I have also seen pictures, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it, and if somebody knows a different way and a better way to, to do it, hey, point it out to me. But some people have noted that, hey, it seems like this is down lower, and the only time that I've seen it down lower is when the customizer drilled a hole down lower so that the 5mm peg could still peg in down lower on this section instead of using this upper peg here, well, on that side, but you get the idea. So it looks like if you want it to be lower, you probably do actually have to drill another 5 millimeter peg. So that's up to you if you want to do that or not. Certainly, kids, if you're inclined to do this custom, get an adult's help. I think that might go without saying. I hope that goes without saying. Nevertheless, Step one is removing, well, step one is getting your supplies together. Step two in this case is taking off those like sword pieces. And I guess step three is pegging it back in his back. But we don't want to leave it there because this does have some beautiful paint on it. And we don't want to risk removing paint from places that we don't want it removed. Or having our process of removing the paint be something where we get splashes on sections that we, again, don't want paint removed from. So if we can take something off, hey, why not do that? 
And so we are left with a bare bones Megatron and we're getting ready to move on to the next step. Step three, four, I'm not really sure. But once we have him bare bone, now we can start to work with things. By rights, and if you looked at uh, episodes uh, 494 and 495, you saw my thoughts about Siege Optimus and Siege Megatron. And you've seen them already with their paint apps. I know that it's removed here, but I'm going to go right through the process with you. Don't worry. Megatron by rights has a little bit of battle damage up on his helmet as well as on both sides of his chest and on the upper lower sections of his arms, on his shins, and on these back pieces. I left it on the back pieces because in tank mode, those back pieces become the front of the tank. And I can believe that the treads uh, would kick up rocks and would go through mud and would get scraped up. So I'm okay with leaving it on the back section here because I didn't... I didn't think it was obtrusive. It was, it's fine, it's fine, but I did not want it on the front of the robot body. So, that being said, I decided that I was going to start with the um, helmet. And the helmet uh, really was a small piece to begin with. And it was one that's pretty flat, so I was actually kind of able to easily rub it. So. What a lot of people have been doing is, and I've heard people talking about this, is they have taken their uh, rubbing alcohol and they've made like a bath and put the figure in it. No, don't do that. Or they have taken the top off of their rubbing alcohol and they have poured it directly onto the figure and of course it goes everywhere. Don't do that. What you should do is Remove the top, and if you're using a, in this case, paper towel, fold your paper towel up relatively small, put it on top of this, tip it up, soaking just that section of paper towel. And I don't know if you can see the circle there, but there's a wet circle there. Once you have that wet circle made, now you can start to kind of uh, work the like region you're looking to rub. In this case, on his head. So I would take it and fold it again. Now we have the wet section right here. And I took Megatron and I literally started rubbing against uh, his helmet. Um, what I found was a good idea was to lift up the head and hold on to the actual whole head section and then start rubbing the entire head section. Eventually, the battle damage paint apps will start to come off. They'll start to, to move. You'll see a little bit of gray or silver on your paper towel. Now, alternatively, if you feel like that's really hard, you could also now use one of your cotton swabs. And if you use one of your cotton swabs, it's the same sort of thing. You will have your rubbing alcohol open and you will take your cotton swab and you will dip it down into your rubbing alcohol. You're going to take it out, you're going to kind of knock the excess off and now that entire piece of cotton is soaked with rubbing alcohol. And again, you can start to rub it along the like helmet area of Megatron to remove the battle damage paint app. That's the easiest one to remove. That's why I started with that one. It was a flat surface and it was easy to remove. I tried, and when I say easy to remove, it's somewhat relative. I tried initially to remove it with 70% um, What's the chemical thing? Isopropyl alcohol. The 70%, I felt like I really had to rub too hard. Um, I would not use 99% on it because I do not want to ruin my figure. But with the 91%, I was able to rub that off. And yes, I had to work at it for a few moments, but it came up pretty easily. Now, that being said, I had the head done. I did not have the arms touched yet, I did not have the chest touched yet, or the lower legs. 
The next thing I did was the lower legs. Again, I opened the rubbing alcohol. I put my paper towel on top of it, turning the rubbing alcohol over, soaked a circle on my paper towel, and then I started rubbing on the shins next. Why? Because the shins are a big, flat area. A couple of like minor pieces were uh, still colored in and not coming off with the paper towel because it was in, like little pieces of battle damage that were in some of the molded details. When I encountered pieces that would not move with the paper towel, then I went in with the cotton swab and I rubbed on those pieces. Now, at this point, I'm after rubbing on this helmet, I'm after rubbing on the uh, shin pieces. Before I try to do anything with the arms or the helm or the uh, chest, I would take a wipe and I would clean off the leg. I would clean off the helmet. After cleaning it off with a wipe, I would then put some dish liquid on a cloth. I would run the cloth underwater. I would wring the cloth out so that it's damp but not dripping soaking wet. Then I would come back and the same areas that I just did with the uh, wipe, cleaning wipe, I would now do with the cloth. You will notice two things. One, I did a section, well two sections in this case, and then I cleaned it off. Also, I controlled the um, I controlled the amount of rubbing alcohol that was used. I did not splash it on the figure. I did not like submerge the figure in it. No, no, no. All I did was I submerged the cotton swab, swab and then I used the cotton swab. Or I took the bottle and turned it up on the paper towel and rubbed with the paper towel. When you feel like those things are starting to dry out or not take anything else off, replace the piece of paper towel you're using, replace the cotton swab with another one. So after I had that done, I decided I was going to deal with the chest next. Now you will notice that I have a Decepticon symbol put on here. There's two ways to deal with the chest. The first is to deal with the entire chest all at once. But if you do that, I can guarantee you that the the Decepticon symbol that's there will come off before the battle damage paint apps uh, really even start to budge. The battle damage paint apps are on there pretty securely. So you can do that and just clean off the whole thing, in which case you have a nice flat area going right across the body. You should be able to rub right across the flat of the body with a paper towel that you have already doused with the rubbing alcohol. But what if you don't want to do that? What if you want to keep the Decepticon symbol intact? What if you don't have another one like I do there to attach to it? And I like the one that I attached to it. It's a little bit just ever so slightly bigger and I liked it a little bit bigger. That's why I did it. The Decepticon symbol that was on him is still underneath that sticker. So it's still there. If I decided I want to take this off, that's fine. That's fine. There's still the Decepticon symbol there because I did this a different way. First, I would take the arms and bring them back out of the way like this. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that so that the painted section on the elbows is far and away from the chest where I'm going to be using the 91% uh, rubbing alcohol. These lower pieces down here are still exposed, but I'm not planning on getting the rubbing alcohol down there. What I did is I dealt with each side of the chest at a time. So I turned Megatron on his side, just like this, and I started with the, and I started rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. I'm not even uh, what positioning myself where the like rubbing alcohol would go up on the Decepticon symbol. If anything, gravity is going to pull it down this way. Once I had some of it off, then I took my paper towel that I had doused and I'd done just this side of it. 
That was it. Once I had that done, I took my uh, cleaning wipe and I cleaned off that side of the chest. And then I went and I took my dishcloth that I used dish liquid and water on and I wiped off just that side of the chest. Can you guess what I did next? That's right. I turned him over this way and done the exact same process on this side of his chest. I again used the Q-tip and then when I had some of it off, I used my doused paper towel to get the rest of it off, rubbing, uh, you know, like, I guess with enough force to move it, like, some people have said, I feel like I have to use so much force I'm going to break it. You shouldn't have to use that much force that you feel like you're going to break it. I never did. Clean it off. Great. Again, use my dishcloth and clean it off. Now I've done both sides of the chest. Wonderful. All that left for paint removal now is the arms. And I took just this arm next and held it like this. Again, you'll notice we're working down the body. Now, the arms were a little bit different. There's a lot of molded in detail here. We have paint in the elbow. And I was like, I really don't want to mess up that elbow. So I did not use a um, uh, cotton swab here at all. In fact, what I did is I took my paper towel and I doused it as we have already shown where you fold it up and you have the little circle that you doused with the rubbing alcohol. Then I opened the paper towel out. And then I put the paper towel around the say forearm and I just started rubbing it around like I started rubbing around the forearm vigorously and then around the bicep vigorously yes it took extra time doing it that way but I didn't have any spillage I didn't have anything extra dropping that was going to threaten the elbow paint and then when I was done I wiped off the lower part of the arm and the upper part of the arm doing the arms took uh, the longest maybe 15 minutes per arm. I'd say about 15 minutes per arm. There were times when I would rub it with the uh, rubbing alcohol on the paper towel and then clean it off with the wipe and then go back and kind of get a new paper towel with new rubbing alcohol on it and come back and do it again. And then clean it off again. Do the upper again and clean it off again. Once I thought that I had everything done with this arm that I wanted to do, then I brought in my dishcloth that had water and dish liquid on it and I washed the arm off. I actually ran it under the water. And of course, when I was all done there, I did the same thing on this side with this arm like this. And that's how I got all of the battle damage off of Megatron. Yes, it took time maybe an hour. But I wasn't quite done with him just yet. No, I still had three things that I wanted to do. The first is the little red kind of square section down on his tummy. It was left unpainted. I at least wanted to paint that in to try and sort of uh, mimic the three colors that are supposed to be on his tummy. So I wanted to paint the red, and I found the best way to do that was to use the handy dandy paintbrush. So I took my red and my piece of paper, and I squeezed out some of my red onto my paper, and I lightly touched it, and then I lightly painted over the square. Now, I went out over the edges of the square, and I did about four coats before it was covered in enough that I was contented and satisfied with it. But since it had went out around the edges, I took my handy dandy toothpick and I went around the edges. I, I basically followed the line to take the excess off. That was it. That was fine. That was great. But I still had one other paint detail I wanted to do. You see, I love that on his head sculpt, we have his little triangles, but we didn't have Megatron's famous unibrow. And I wanted his black unibrow. Now, by rights, the black on this guy is kind of like a brownie black. It's what I would call a warm black. 
and my gloss black is a cool black, but hey, it will have to do. So again, I squirted some paint out onto my paper, and again, taking my handy dandy toothpick, I dipped it in the paint, and then I started to do along his brow line, just above his eye. Now you might say, that's a very small, fine detail. True, it is. You might say, hey, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. My eyesight is nothing, nothing to get excited about, and I was able to do it. If I can, you can. The trick is, after you do it, honestly, take a picture of it. Use your phone, take a picture of it, zoom in. See where you've missed. See where you need to add. See where you sort of splotched paint a little bit. If you splotch paint, as I did around his nose, then you take this. This end has the black paint on it. This end has nothing on it. You just used it to scrape off the red earlier. It's just like a scraping tool. So now you go up by his nose or wherever and you start scraping away, man. You just start scraping away. Eventually, you will have the unibrow look that you want. But you're going to have to be patient with it. You're going to have to realize you're going to make a little bit of a mess in the meantime. That left me with only one other thing to do because I had done the paint on his tummy, I had done his unibrow, I wanted a new Decepticon logo. Luckily, I have stickers for that. So, I picked up one of the stickers and I held it with my um, tweezers, because that's the best way to apply stickers and to deal with stickers. I held them with my tweezers. I used my crafting scissors to cut the shape, especially on the top. I will tell you now, I ruined two stickers trying to do this. Starscream Fiance is so much better at cutting these things than I am, but she is not here today. Uh, she was at work today, and I did the best I could. Did the best I could. Once I had it done, I put it over the Decepticon symbol that was there, uh, and just pushed it on. Simple as that. Pushed it on. And in the end, this is the Megatron that I wound up with. I do want to show his face close so you can sort of see what I did there. And right there, hopefully, you can see his unibrow. It's a unibrow. Um, and you can see the Decepticon symbol on his chest, and you can see the little red dot down or square down on his tummy. But it was the face I really wanted to show, and I really think now, with those battle damage apps removed and the unibrow kind of painted in, like, that is quintessentially Megatron. Maybe, I, I said it before, this is, you know, probably the best mainline Chug Megatron that we've ever gotten, at least for looks in terms of capturing the essence of the character. And here are my three G1-esque Megatrons from the mainline. I still think that the one who captures it the most, kind of the going standard, is Toy World's Hegemon. But he is kind of pricey and not the easiest one to find. Uh, I think for just being a fun mold, fun toy, fun functional toy, the, com um, the Titan, not Titans, is it Titans Return? Yeah, Titans Return one is probably the best one, just for being a fun toy. If you want a, a good, poseable, fun Megatron, he's fantastic. But... If you want one that really kind of captures G1, or at least that you can do a bit of work on to capture G1, and do a little bit more work on to get rid of the like battle damage paint apps and whatnot, just so he captures the character just a little tiny bit more, then the seed one is probably for you. Plus, even though I, I feel like it's not good that he has undergone a price jump, he's still cheaper than Hegemon. So for kind of, uh, I guess, being accessible and being an accessible price, he would probably fit the bill for an awful, awful lot of collectors. Either way, I think any of these options are winners. It really kind of boils down to what works best for you. Okay, that's one custom done step by step. Now I'm going to show Optimus's step by step and his was far more involved and I'll sort of reference what I did with Ultra Magnus as we go through Optimus Prime. And now we come to Optimus Prime and like I said I'm going to sort of reference 
Ultra Magnus while we look at this guy. Now, I can't go back and show exactly what it was I did with Ultra Magnus because I don't have him. He wasn't mine. He belonged to a friend of the channel, Cyril. I really appreciate him letting me not only take a look um, at that figure, but, like, work on getting some of this battle damage off of him. Um, so, there was really a few sections worth noting on Ultra Magnus. The inside of his forearms, which luckily they're removable pieces, so you can just take off the blue uh, forearms of Ultra Magnus, and you can take a piece of paper towel, you can douse that piece of paper towel in rubbing alcohol, again 91%, you can honestly just take the forearm, say put it over your finger, or maybe two fingers depending on how small your hands are, and rub on that inside of the forearm with the paper towel. I promise you, if you do it long enough, you're going to get the battle damage off of the inner arms, we'll say, of Ultra Magnus. His toes on his lower legs, uh, the blue toes, are the same thing. You could, again, take those uh, blue armor pieces off. You're going to want to hold them as if he's standing up. Hold them so that the toes are right at the bottom. Because in case you have any rubbing alcohol that drips or spills or starts to run down, and you don't want it running uh, kind of down the, the shin or the, well, not the calf, but the shin of the leg because there is silver and red paint on the white that's there. So you will hold it like upright like this and you will rub on the toes like that until it comes off. Again, on the forearms and the toes, you can use paper towel doused with rubbing alcohol. 91%. The chest of Ultra Magnus, honestly, I just took, again, the paper towel dust. I went right across the chest pretty vigorously. Now, I know what you're thinking. Whoa, 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 Gapa. But there is clear plastic on the chest. Wouldn't the rubbing alcohol ruin the clear plastic? I've heard that it will break clear plastic. Well, we'll get to that because I had the same issue here with Optimus. And finally on Ultra Magnus, we had the thighs. And the thighs is where we're going to begin with Optimus Prime. Because the thighs were actually quite simple to do. The thighs, I did not use any of the uh, cotton swabs for. The thighs of Optimus Prime, I took a piece of paper towel, I doused it with the rubbing alcohol, I held on to him, and I just started rubbing the front of the thigh. Because it's only on the front. And I rubbed, and I rubbed, and I rubbed, and I rubbed until it came off. And once it was off, I, you guessed it, took my cleaning wipe and cleaned off the thigh. And then, yes, you guessed it, I took my dishcloth that had uh, dish liquid and uh, water and had been, you know, wrung out so that it was just damp. I cleaned it off with that. I did both thighs that way and I cleaned both thighs off before I did anything else. You will notice that I held them this way and that I took my paper towel and went just around the thigh. Why did I make sure to hold them this way? Because we have white paint, we have yellow paint, I didn't want any of that touched. Going down here, none of this is paint. The blue isn't and the gray isn't until you get down to the toes. You should not be using enough rubbing alcohol that it's gonna run down to his toes. You just, you just, you know, douse this with it and uh, use it. You don't, you don't soak your paper towel with it. You just turn the whole bottle bottom up, as they say. I showed it earlier. I'll show it again, just as a reminder for anybody who actually needs it. Here's your bottle. You're just turning it up like this on it and taking it back off so that you have a circle of rubbing alcohol that you can use. That's it. Don't you overuse it. There were the legs finished. That left a little bit on the chest and his shoulders and his forearms. Well, the forearms were much like they were with uh, Megatron, except we had less molded in detail. So I was able to take my doused paper towel and again, going up and down this time, I was able to do the forearms. When I was almost done the forearms and down to, you know, just the, like the, 
I guess little pieces in the molded in detail that didn't want to come out. I used my cotton swab. I got deep in there and rubbed again. And again, rubbed it off with my paper towel. And then finished it off with my wipe. And as you probably guessed by now, my dishcloth. I've done the same thing on this forearm over here. Exact same thing. I'm holding it this way with the arm out from the body. I'm going in an up and down motion. Again, if anything was to drip, it's just gonna drip down onto the, well, in this case, uh, the, uh, my cloth, my display here, but it would just drip down. It wouldn't drip onto paint on the figure to ruin anything. That left the shoulders and the chest. I decided to deal with the chest next. And I found the best way to do that was to actually open the two parts of the chest. I done that and then I pushed the shoulder back. So now I had this part of the chest right here. I have my finger in behind the open chest piece and I used the Q-tip right here rubbing quite vigorously and eventually started to move. It was, the chest was easily the hardest section to get to move. Once I finally had it started to move, then I took my paper towel again and I went across the whole thing. Yes, I most definitely did get some on the clear plastic. Yes, I used the cotton swab and the uh, paper towel doused more than once. In between, uh, like, you know, the first, second, third time that I rubbed with the cotton swab, in between the first, second, third time that I rubbed with the paper towel, I would clean the area off. So like I rubbed with the cotton swab, started to get it moving, used my paper towel that I had doused in uh, rubbing alcohol, cleaned the area off with a wipe, specifically putting my finger in this section here where the clear plastic is and going all around. Then I went back and rubbed some more with my uh, cotton swab, some more with my paper towel, and you guessed it, my wipe. I did that on both sides of the chest. When that was done, on both sides, and it was off, I closed the chest back up. I took my uh, cloth that had the dish liquid and the water on it, and I cleaned off his entire chest section. The whole chest was cleaned off. Wonderful. All that left next were the shoulders. They were the last thing to do. Now, this shoulder was easy because all I did was the exact same thing I'd done on the forearm. On the forearm, I'd taken my paper towel and rubbed up and down on the forearm. On the shoulder, I took my paper towel and rubbed up and down on the shoulder. Yes, there's one of those little blast effect warts here. Only around the wart did I use the cotton swab and basically very vigorously went around the wart with it. Eventually came up. That was a bit of a challenge. And then I rubbed this one off and cleaned it off with my wipe. And eventually I took my dishcloth and cleaned it off as well. Then we came to the other shoulder. I will tell you now that you can remove the battle damage without removing the Autobot symbol, but it's going to take you a very long time and it's going to require you using a cotton swab and you're going to have to be very, very delicate and make sure that you have the figure always positioned in such a way that the rubbing alcohol is never going to accidentally drizzle over the Autobot symbol because the Autobot symbol does want to go away first. Me personally, I got rid of the whole thing and I used a sticker. When I had everything gone and both shoulders cleaned off, I used my tweezers here. I picked off the sticker, I put it on, and of course I pushed it on. And that was the robot mode done. I love how this guy looks now in robot mode. Now I had always used this guy as my stand-in for Optimus Prime. And this of course is the evasion mode, Optimus Prime that I did custom work on on his shoulders and I did custom work on on his chest and I made a face plate for him and he stood as my optimist for a long time and even now you can see he's slightly taller but I don't know if it's finally time 
after about five years, if it's finally time to replace him. I'm not someone who likes to change out figures very easily. And honestly, for uh, an Optimus Prime, none, absolutely none that have come along have been the right size with the right articulation to replace this guy until potentially now. I don't know, which one do you like best? I'll say this, I like the red on the evasion mode better. It's red. The red that's on Optimus, it's really funny. A while ago I posted a, a photo and a lot of people said, that Optimus is pink. He's sort of like a raspberry almost type of red. Like the red on him is very similar. If you have him, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, the red on Siege Optimus is very similar to uh, say the red that was on the Deluxe Class Fall of Cybertron Optimus or the Deluxe Class Fall of Cybertron Starscream. Like it's that red but there is sort of a pinky almost undertone to it. It's nice but it is a different red there's no doubt about it. In robot mode I'm sold on the Siege replacing this guy but what about that alt mode? I didn't like the alt mode of the Siege because it had those truck eyebrows that I so, so dislike. The alt mode of the Evasion Mode Optimus, of course, looks like this, just to give you a reminder. It is and always has been about as beautifully G1 as you're going to get. And this, this is one of the main reasons that the Evasion Mode Optimus has remained as my Optimus. Because his alt mode is spot on perfect. The robot mode, eh, I did a little bit of custom work. But the articulation in the robot mode really kind of sold him as, yeah, he's a very functional Optimus. He can strike a lot of nice poses. I don't mind adding a little bit of paint. Okay, so we've already determined that in robot mode, the Siege one is better. Hands down, it hasn't replaced, but what about that alt mode? Well, that brings me to the other bit of customization that I did with the Siege iteration of the Autobot leader. Oh yeah, important sidebar here before we go on and look at the alt mode of the Siege Optimus. If you don't like the, uh, I, 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 I'll call it lights, that are kind of underneath his forearms that come out and tab into the bumper in alt mode. If you don't like them, you can remove them. You can take out the screw there that's in his forearm, take his forearm apart, and take this whole plastic piece out. The problem is, if you take that off, while it does help the robot mode to have just a, a more kind of uniform, less kibbly arm, when you put him in alt mode, part of the front wheel well will be missing and so your tires may look kind of odd since they're not in a wheel well. But that's up to you. It's an option if you want to do it and get rid of this piece. Personally, I like it because it looks like this. Extra under slung cannons. I dig it. It gives him four more blasters. Come on, that is cool. So if I'm talking alt mode, why am I showing the back of Optimus Prime in robot mode? Well, because I want to focus in here on this backpack. You may have noticed that my silhouette is slightly different than what you've seen. It's because my backpack is slightly different than what you've probably seen. As you can see, we go in here on the sides and we are missing a section down right here. That whole section is a separate piece, but the way it's attached does require you doing some cutting if you want to properly remove it. And it can get a little bit messy if you're not careful. But when you remove it, this is what you're left with as a backpack. And I'm pointing it out because I know when I show the alt mode, people will say, yeah, but what does his backpack look like now? That's what it looks like. I personally kind of like it better, but to each their own. I, I don't, the backpack doesn't bother me anyway. I say this, truth is, I would love for us to just have a nice third party or whoever make a more G1 normal truck accurate backpack. Now you might say, hey, but how would you put it in? By rights? This whole backpack section is really just on a mushroom peg. If you explore enough, you'll see the mushroom peg I'm talking about. And you could, by rights, just slide the whole thing off and put 
put a new one on. But in light of that not being a reality, at least for the time being, I thought, could he look more like his traditional G1 truck? And indeed, he most certainly can by looking like this. So how do you do your siege? This is how I do mine now. That being said, there's a whole bunch of things done here. First, the blue that is like off to the sides and in his front grill here is gone. You will notice the plastic in both of these sections on the side and the front can just pop out. Now, you do need something to push on it with. I found using a pen knife like this and kind of going in behind and pushing out on, because there's little, like there's little holes on the back you'll see where the blue plastic kind of shows through. You can push out on it from there. And when you push out on it from there, it takes a bit of force. You're probably gonna break it, but what do you care? You're throwing it away. Um, it will eventually pop off from all three areas. Doing the grill in the front, easily the hardest one to have pop off. The other two, not that big a deal, to be honest with you. They're not glued in there or anything like that. They just fit in there and they come out relatively easily. And in behind, we have a silver painted grill and silver painted lights, which I think looks more like a truck. Now, I also wanted to note about the uh, sections on his forearms before we put him in alt mode so that it would make sense when I pointed out that we have the entire wheel well here now. If we had these sections off, we would not have the front of the wheel well. And I think that would look a bit silly, personally. Maybe that's just me. Now, that being said, here's the big piece. The big piece is what did you do up top here? Well, I used this plastic cutting disc. It goes on this piece, mandrel I think it's called, and then this goes slotted into your drill or your uh, rotary tool, and you can use it to cut plastic. Now, make sure you have a plastic cutting disc. Make sure it's the right speed, and then you can kind of cut down there, and cut down there, and cut down the two sides. You might say, whoa, 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 I don't have one of those, or whoa, 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 I do have one of those, but I don't have enough experience yet to do something like that. Well, you could always use some sort of a crafting knife, and there's a couple of little tabs in there, and you can really start cutting along a little bit at a time, and eventually you will cut through the tab. You may have a little bit of a gnarled edge along right there and right there. Um, maybe I should show it this way, along right there and right there. You're probably going to have a little bit of a gnarled edge. It is what it is. It's the cost of doing business. We also, right here in the very middle, you may notice that we have a little like divot up right here. There was another piece of plastic over this that I think was there meant to maybe solidify all this just so it was stronger. You can pop that off. It does take some cutting. You're definitely going to ruin this piece of plastic as you take it off. But once you get it off, it's fine. What's underneath is just fine. No problem. Now, that being said, you finally have these two sections cut off. The, the kind of eyebrow lights are gone. You have this middle section now kind of wrenched off. Again, I used uh, this knife just to kind of work and root at all of it to get it off. Now you have a bit of a gnarled edge left. What do you do to try and clean it up a little bit? Well, I took some sandpaper and I sanded along this edge and I sanded along this edge. Uh, I also had cut kind of right here and right here on the two sides. It was sort of gnarled. So I sanded all of that down just so it was sort of smooth or well, smooth-ish. It didn't have edges that were going to be sharp and poke you. Let's put it that way. Once I had all of that down, I took my handy dandy piece of paper and I took my bright red um, gloss paint. I put it out on the paper and again I used, I don't have it here now, but I used my brush and I just touched up the edges there and the edges here. I may do a little bit more work with that yet, but that's it. 
That's it. That was the last thing I did was touch up those little bits. And then I had a prime that looked like this. And how does he compare as like a G1-ish looking Optimus? Well, if my go-to was the alt mode of the evasion mode Optimus, here's how they look together in alt mode. I mean, okay, from front on, they're a little bit different, but they're both like flat nose transport truck things side on looks like this there's your side profile and truth is i kind of like that the white line on the siege optimus doesn't continue down the side of the truck because when he would turn into truck mode in the original cartoon that line would sort of disappear it was always weird to me that it did but it always did so i kind of dig that it's not there but the real test is this I don't care what anybody says, my Optimus Prime, now and forever, will have a trailer. By the way, the G1 reissue that's out without a trailer, that in my neck of the woods costs $70. <laughs> never, never in 10 million years would I just buy the cab for $70 without the trailer. No, I'd rather stick with this. And this is the second chance trailer. I love this thing. I. I think it's a perfect trailer, and by rights, it is made to go with the um, evasion mode Optimus Prime. And like to me, this looks like G1 Optimus Prime. This works splendidly. But you know what? So does this. Turning him just a, a little bit there, say. Like I think this works. The robot mode is more. Uh, G1 accurate. I think the truck mode with a little bit of custom work is pretty passable as a pretty decent G1 Optimus. I like it. I like it. Is it good enough to replace my evasion mode? I'm not sure yet, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Anyway, there you have it. Two faction leaders, step-by-step -step instructions of exactly how I customized both of them. And, as a little bonus, I even talked about what I did with Ultra Magnus. I hope that all of this, or some of this, helps you to get these figures looking perfectly as you'd like them to be. And here we are once again, and now you know what they both look like. I, like, I dig it. I love what was done with Megatron. Uh, the unibrow, believe it or not, is a defining feature to me, and I'm so glad he has it. I showed Starscream Fiance this guy after I removed the battle damage on him. Now, she didn't initially like him. She was like, he looks messy and dirty. No, I don't like him as Megatron. And when I showed her this, she was like, whoa, whoa, he looks so much better. And like, she wasn't saying it sarcastically. Like, she meant, wow, now he looks like Megatron. So I know that it was a significant difference for her to do an exact about face. And now, now I, like, I kind of feel like, is he going to replace Hegemon? Probably not. But if I'm going to have a backup, because if something happens to Hegemon, let's be honest, I'm not going to replace it. For the price that he is, I'm not going to replace it. I'm probably going to have this guy be my backup Megatron now. My, my just-in-case Megatron. Although, you don't know, he might find a way on the shelf. I'll say this, I absolutely adore that head sculpt. And seeing the unibrow on it now just makes it that much more Megatron-y. And then we have Optimus. The robot mode already had me sold. It already looked like Optimus. I even didn't mind the battle damage on it. But having the battle damage removed looks that much more cartoon accurate. At least to me. I feel like that this is the Optimus I've always been waiting for, at least in robot mode. But that truck mode, man, those truck eyebrows, I couldn't do it. I just could not do it. I like that the backpack is now a little more slight, and I love the truck mode that we now have. Would I like to actually have a, like a third-party alternate backpack? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if that's ever going to happen, and until that happens... This will definitely suffice. I hope that explaining how to remove that battle damage helps you. How to do the other things helps you. The big takeaway here for re removing the battle damage, if you are so inclined, is to use 91% uh, rubbing alcohol. Not 70, 
not 99, 99 is too much, 70 is too little, but your Goldilocks amount, so to speak, is 91. I also mentioned what I did with Ultra Magnus. I'm sorry that I couldn't show it again, but I just, like I said, I don't have them. I don't have them anymore. But it's the same sort of process, and you want gravity to be your friend, especially when you're working on the toes of Ultra Magnus. I mentioned the G1 reissue of Optimus Prime. <laughs> no, definitely I'm not getting that at all. There's no way that I could justify a, you know, leader class price point for just the cab and no trailer. No, thank you. Not for me. Maybe it is for you, and that's cool, too, if that's what you're into. I'll say this, though. The chrome on that looks fantastic. Now, just two other things that I would just want to mention before we head out of here. The first is my overall grade for the Siege Wave 1, the Siege line so far, because I've gotten some people who have said that they're a little bit confused. I gave good marks, and I gave a lot more innocent of the price increase than I thought I was going to, yet those who talk to me say I still complain a lot about those price increases. Here's the thing. The Siege line is a fine line. It is not this huge savior line because everything has been garbage before it. No, it's just going back to what worked in the beginning. This sort of swivel and hinge joints and engineering that was used in the Classics Universe line is being used again here, and it's working, because it worked then as well. I think that if you have been around the collecting game long enough that you had those earlier figures, then you don't need to replace them, especially with ones that have a price hike that I, you probably don't want to pay. My Classics Sideswipe, I paid 11 bucks for. No, for a smaller, lighter Sideswipe, I do not want to pay almost four times as much. Around here is 40 bucks or 30 bucks, okay, so three times as much. I don't want to pay three times as much for smaller, lighter sideswipe. To me, it's not worth it. But if you don't have that earlier sideswipe, considering what he usually goes for in the aftermarket, the Siege one is probably a better option for you because it is a good figure. By the way, I would definitely get the Toy Hacks labels for that Sideswipe. It helps it tremendously. So, my overall score for the Siege line, especially for newer collectors, it's going to be about a 9. It's a great line so far. For those of us old fogies like myself who have the earlier figures, that's probably about a 6.5, maybe a 7. Like, it's all right, but give us some of the figures that we don't have. Or, if you're going to give us updates, give us ones that are bar none, Excellent updates. I'm looking at you, Mirage. I can't wait to get that guy. And finally, a lot of people have asked me, hey, why haven't you given a reaction to some of the figure reveals that we've had at late? As of late. There you go. Why haven't you given your reaction to uh, Wonderfest? Because I'm waiting until we have Toy Fair out of the way, and then I'm going to talk about all of the toy reveals. You guys that have been around for a while should know by now that I do this kind of every year. In 2017, I wasn't that impressed. Or maybe it was 2016, though I think it was 2017. In 2018, I was quite impressed. I can't wait to see what comes up this time. Anyway, I know this was long, but you guys asked me to go step by step, so I went step by step. I hope, I hope that it helps you. As always, please hit that subscribe button. You know it's beyond appreciated. And the next time that we get together, it will be episode 500. And I'm planning something kind of special for that, as I always try to do when I hit one of these, you know, 100, 200, 300. So, that being said, thanks for giving me some of your very valuable time, and I especially look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.